More you talk now. Hey, we're gonna have a great show. I see our special guest. Should we introduce her and go ahead and bring her on? I say let's do it. We'll give her as much time <laughs> as possible. It's it's uh, you know she's an amazing person. We've been trying to get her for a while, and we've known her for a while, and she is on some amazing shows. Very popular. New Amsterdam. That's one of your favorites, isn't it? I, it's one of them. I I I think Criminal Minds that she's been on is is one of my more favorites in that More one. favorite. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, I like that. More favorite. more favorite. Well, my more oh. favorite than Criminal Minds and New Amsterdam is SWAT. Oh, yeah. SWAT is oh, a good show. Oh, it just... In fact, I'm going to have to probably talk to her and say, how do I get on as an extra on SWAT? Because I, it's me. It's well, just, don't you... Can't you see me on there? I wanted to ask her how, you know, if she could introduce me to, you know, Shamar, you know. No. <laughs> Because he's been on Criminal Minds, and like you see him, and he just seems like a oh, really absolutely. cool dude, and he's on SWAT now. And Sons of Anarchy? I've never watched it, but it was oh, a very popular show. I mean, show. she is on all kinds of things, incredibly talented. Katie, let's bring her on. Her name is Eileen Gruba. And she is a writer. Mm-hmm. She is a producer. She has uh, won awards from for some independent films. I mean, it's it's amazing we could even get her to come on the show. I mean, as busy as she is, even in the midst of the pandemic and all the things going on, but um, it, it's uh, super cool that she's going to be here with us. And there she is. Hi. Hey, hey Eileen. Hello. Hi. Hey, great to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure, really. Thank you. I know we've been oh. trying to work this out for a while. I yeah. know we really have. You know, you've been busy. Now, what have you been busy doing since the lockdown? Since the lockdown, haha. <laughs> Interesting thing is that the second that it happened, the minute it happened, um, everything was getting shut down so rapidly. And I started thinking about the fact that, you know, we tape most of our auditions ourselves anyway these days and send them in. So I called up my friend Eric, who's extremely clever, Eric Pasoja, an actor I've known from the actor's studio for many years. And I, and I said, why don't we make our own show or do something where we record our own parts like we do with auditions sure. and then get somebody to edit them together and we'll make a show. That's cool. So with that idea, we started this thing called um, Shelter Skelter Pandemic Players. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Eric recruited a bunch of um, really wonderful comedians and we started a virtual writer's room and we started making little comedy sketches and figuring out how to produce in zoom uh which we did do quite a few we did a really fun parody of um the brady bunch theme song and uh we all got to play college students who were spreading coronavirus all across the states <laughs> and uh that one did really really well we've had some celebrity uber eats adventures and um he did a chopped parody so we've had a lot of fun with that oh that's very that cool sounds very, that is very, very fun. cool yeah. And also in post, I've been, well, my biggest project has been taking care of a cancer patient who's been going through surgeries and all that during oh. the pandemic. So he's actually really lucky. He got quarantined with a survivor <laughs> <laughs> and because uh, it's been a bigger battle than any of us anticipated. So we've been doing that, which has been quite time consuming. And then um, I'm in post-production on two films that are both disability inclusive that we shot in the fall and one in January. So we're doing posts on those, Dead End Drive and um, Dark Hearts, which will go to festivals. And those are ones that I helped produce as well as being in them. So what else? Uh, one of the, the writer of Dark Hearts is on here, Tim. So he, he brought me a story last year when I was in the middle of, um, unfortunately, two other people I love going through cancer battles and he sent me a story and we worked it and worked it and sent it back and forth across the country until we had a script we could shoot. And that was the one we shot in January with a wonderful young director named Kevin Stevenson. And we've just really had a lot of fun with that. And we were mentoring a young um, man named Brock Wademan, who I've been mentoring for a very long time, whose um, mom produces with me. So We've been doing a lot. You have. You know, you you amaze me really because, um, you know, we've we've known each other for a few years. And and just to see what you've been going through, what you had been through, and you're, I mean, and so many many things we could talk about. 
Um, and I do want to have you back on the show. We're going to have to work that out just because of, of being a survivor and what happened when you were little. And I don't want to, you know, spoiler alert here. I don't want to give out too much, but um, I have great, great regard for you, great respect, because uh, mm -hmm. you're very determined. You're a great example. Um, I appreciate that. And I think our audience needs to know more about yeah. that. And so we'll have to work that out. But something else happened recently okay we've got the COVID thing and of course our culture has been turned upside down mm -hmm. and you know with the tragic death uh, mm -hmm. inexcusable there's no way to explain it away mr george floyd and of course that's a whole nother conversation but you were kind of a week or two you were kind of caught up in the middle of oh um, well, you know what i'm i'm right in the middle of um Beverly Hills, uh, West Hollywood, right on the line. And so a lot of stuff broke out around us. Like the night, that Saturday night that we started hearing on the news that there was a lot of violent interference in the um, peaceful protests. Like people were taking the opportunity to use it to their advantage rather than for what it should have really been. And so... Um, as we were watching everything unfold, a lot of the, like on Melrose, a lot of the buildings were getting broken into and they burned down a Starbucks and a few things. And it was starting to happen. It was moving in and around our area. So at that time, I was in communication with a friend of mine who lives further north. And and I was being strongly advised to, like, just get out of the area just in case something crazy happens. And I looked out my balcony and about... 30 police cars went racing down the street, sirens on, Ooh. helicopters were going over, the sheriff's helicopters, and then I looked down towards the street, and I saw these kids, and, um, you know, when I say kids, it's, you know, anyone <laughs> younger than me, um, so, <laughs> kids, but they looked young, like teenagers, um, just kind of lingering on the corner, and I thought, that's odd, and then I just thought that was odd, because I... I've never seen them around before and they looked like they were up to a little bit of mischief and a few of them. And then I, um, did pack up my stuff and decided to head North for a couple of nights. And, um, as I was driving out of the neighborhood, I saw bunches of little groups of kids and they were all wearing like hoodies and they were all different races. So it wasn't one thing. None of them were holding signs or any kind of indication of peaceful protest. Mm. They all looked like they were sort of positioned on their corners. And I had to weave through the neighborhood to get out because a lot of things were were closed off. And then later I heard that it was like a organized attack in a lot of different directions. Mm. So I was, I was glad I left. It made me really sad because um, I don't know how many of the people listening today know that I've been an advocate for inclusion for many, many years. And that when I talk about inclusion, I'm talking about everyone being valued yes. and yes. being honored and respected as human beings, everyone. And I don't care what someone's difference is. And since I advocate for the community that is the most rejected historically throughout all of time, uh, the community of people with disabilities, which encompasses every single kind of difference you could have, mm -hmm. every physical difference, every visual difference, every mental difference, every race, every religion, every uh, gender difference, every single difference is included in the people with disabilities community, including young, old, no one is, is going to get out of being a part of this community unless they have a tragic, sudden death. So everybody ends up disabled in some way, somehow, sometime in their lifetime. So um, throughout the years, I've been on the diversity committees at the Screen Actors Guild in my industry and have always stood up for inclusion. I've always tried to mentor um, people with all differences coming into our industry to give a voice to any community or any group that is kept out based on an exterior perception. You know, so I feel like every human being has a right to be heard, has a right to live their dreams. They have a right to uh, fair and equal treatment everywhere they go, including medically and socially and in schools. So um, I'm very, very passionate about people being um, given the opportunity to, to speak up when they're being unfairly treated and for anyone to hijack that movement 
or take advantage of it or use it as an opportunity to harm more people. Uh, it's such a disservice to all the people who are really speaking up for fair and equal rights. It is. Yeah, it, it, it really, really is. is. And, yeah. and I, I heard you use the word here and, and listen a couple times. And, and uh, you don't know this, but last Friday I went to a protest out by my office just a couple blocks mm -hmm. away. And it was mainly younger people, young adults, you know, 75 to 100 of them. And I went to listen and to learn. And I actually recorded some interviews. Um, mm -hmm. But it bothered me how they had been hijacked, how they were being manipulated, their emotions being manipulated, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. untruths that were being spoken. You know, a guy came in from 55 miles away to speak and um, – that bothers me because there, I think there was a bunch of uh, young adults here that they want to make a difference. They want to make a change. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I approach them, I say, I just have a couple of questions for you. I understand I have no agenda. I just want to listen mm -hmm. to you. I want to hear you. I want to, I, I want right. to understand you. Yes, I want to know what the problem is. Exactly. Who's, exactly. You know, Who's harming you? How is it happening? Let us know so we can do something exactly. about it. Exactly. You know, yeah. it, it, um, it was a very interesting time and, and I actually had, um, one couple who screamed at me and they were saying, don't trust him, don't trust him, don't do this, don't do this, don't, which is a typical um, phrase that is being used by agitators, you know, in yeah. the whole situation. Yeah. But we need to listen more, you know, and we need to respect more. Mm -hmm. right? That's a whole yeah. conversation that, that we definitely need to have with you because I, I appreciate your advocacy. Mm -hmm. um, but Katie, there's, I told you about a conversation I had had with Eileen um, regarding something that is close to us at Utah. Yeah, so we, you told me you uh, were talking about bullying a lot mm -hmm. and that you speak on it quite a bit. And you were talking about the disabled community and they're one of the most bullied, which I don't think a lot of people know. The number one target of a bully. You know what, even in my present life situation, I joke with my friends, if you want to know who the mean people are, walk me in a room and just watch their faces. Really? Um, Horrible. People with disabilities of any kind are the number one target of bullies. And the reason is because usually a bully is looking for someone that they perceive to be less than them, hmm. not as valuable as them, not as worthy as them. And bullies come in all shapes, sizes, forms, ages, bullies try to find someone they feel they can dominate, someone that they perceive to be weaker. And um, finally, uh, throughout a lifetime, I mean, when I first experienced bullying, I was a small child just getting out of a wheelchair. I had no idea how badly I was going to be punished for getting out of that wheelchair. Really? <laughs> you know, for, getting, and, for getting out of it? I mean, they were Right, because... because then I then they saw a person who was broken. Sorry, there's a horn going off outside, and there's nothing <laughs> I can hear about. This. Um, yes, I, I've written about it in some of my blogs, and it's very interesting. But you know, people can be really cruel when they see someone walking uh, with a challenge or limping, or you know, in my case, when I was a young kid, it was it was I went from getting out of a wheelchair to walking with one leg and sort of dragging the other one and my knees sort of caved in a little bit and I just became the target of every bully, you know, every bully. And um, I had to deal with it for a lot of years and in my early years I didn't know how, my parents taught me how, mm. how to face them and how to stand up to them and thank God I had a brilliant mom who helped me wrap my head around it at a young age and uh, told me things that really helped me keep putting a smile on my face and walking back into a door with my head held high. And um, I won't get into too many details, but I still deal with bullies on a regular basis because whenever there's a weak person in the room, they want to dominate who they think is, is less than them. And for some reason, they think a person with a disability or as you've seen across the country lately, a person with a different color or a person with a different sexual identity they think of them as less or not right or broken or something like that. And I resent that. <laughs> um, yeah. In addition, uh, there is a, a misconception that is enormous that needs to be cleared up and it needs to be cleared up regularly and loudly 
it is a misconception to believe that someone who has lived with a disability most of their lives or who has overcome cancer or battled it or who has gone through some sort of hell um car accident that left them paralyzed or you know an illness that made them lose a limb or an eye or vision or hearing or um speech or you know burned their skin or anything any of that stuff yeah any yeah. of it mm -hmm. does not make you weaker my friends <laughs> <laughs> It makes you so much stronger. And therefore, I I now um and have for quite a while been of the clear understanding that you're not showing me what's wrong with me with your behavior. You're showing me what's wrong with you. Absolutely. And if you think you can crush me, you definitely pick the wrong girl. <laughs> uh, because that's not gonna happen. It's just not going to happen in my lifetime. The only person who can stop me or end me or crush me is me. A lot of people can try, Absolutely. and they have. Uh -huh. But I will persist, and I will persevere, and I will overcome, and I will adjust, and I will find my way, even if my other way is around you, over you, whatever it takes. Because if there's anything that a person with a disability learns from an early age or from whatever age they're facing that challenge, um, they learn how to adjust, they learn how to adapt, they learn how to overcome, and they learn internal strength that is beyond most people's understanding. It fascinates me to hear what you're saying, you know, but yeah. I never put those pieces together. Katie, I don't know about you. Yeah, well, I was just thinking, I, I battle um, several chronic illnesses, so I kind of relate to you in a way. Because I, I don't like, if you look at me like I don't look like I have something wrong, but then as soon as people find out that I do, they make the comments, they say things, like very hurtful things. I've had several people tell me, why don't you just take a gun and get it over with? And like, it's like, you know, it really does make you so much stronger because it's like you have to be with the way people treat you. And it's like, it's not you, it's them. And you finally realize that eventually. So I really... You know, let, let, let's just um, expand on that a little bit, okay? Take a kid who's suddenly told at six years old they have cancer. Now they've got to go through surgeries, which are frightening. Mm -hmm. They've got to go through chemotherapy, which is painful, very difficult. Now they've got to deal with, usually, sibling abuse because they're getting attention from their parents. Then they've got to go out into society and have society abuse them because they have scars. Mm -hmm. or, or, and then society gets mad at them because they get mad or they fight for themselves or they're edgy. Well, go back and think for a second what that kid went through that made them such a fighter. Mm. Now, you want to fight that kid? First of all, for your soul, do you really want to fight that kid? Or do you want to be a great human being and clear their path and let them go out into the world and do what they're supposed to do? Because they survived for a reason. Yes. Yeah. Now. A lot of people are looking at our world today. A lot of people, I would say the majority of people, are looking at our world today and they're saying, our world is broken. Well, guess what makes you have a broken world? And a broken puzzle, and a broken building, and a broken pretty much anything, is that you leave out your cornerstones. You leave out your most powerful pieces. You can't leave out 20% of a puzzle and expect that puzzle to work. Oh, oh. that's great. Yeah. So Good if our society is leaving out the 20% of the strongest people on the planet, guess what we have? We've left out our game changer. Mm -hmm. We've left out our game changer. Yeah, absolutely. What we need to do is step back and look at those people who think they're better than everybody and ask ourselves why. And maybe we need to shift gears a little bit and instead of being harder on the kids with the disabilities who are standing up for themselves or the kids with the challenges or the kids that are not in the cool pack or that are the wrong race, instead of getting mad at them for standing up for themselves, why don't we clear their path and let them go out and change our world? Absolutely. And why not learn from them? How much can we learn? From oh, you can learn everything. You know, I, I'm not as young as I used to be. Is that a funny thing to say? But I will tell you that for at least the past 20-something years of my life, every time someone's facing their life, I get the phone call. So wow. why is that? Because I've faced my life enough times when people are in trouble, when they're really, truly in trouble, 
they call me because I've been through a lot and I've survived and somehow still have a smile on my face. Uh, if you go into a children's cancer ward, you're going to see a lot of smiles and really huge spirits. Huh. Strength in spades. Now, if we could just support that community, clear their path, get out of their way instead of stopping them and pointing out what's wrong with them all the time. If we could get out of their way and think about the power that's about to come into our world. I'd rather have a kid who's faced adversity their entire life and has fought hard just to be yeah. here on the planet and then fought hard to deal with society, as you mentioned, uh, how cruel people are, mm -hmm. and has managed to keep putting a smile on their face and keep going. I'd rather have that person running my company, my country, my, my world, um, my social media campaigns. I'd rather have that person who's been through everything standing up and fighting for me. Absolutely. And my company and my, and my goals and, you know, all the things we all want to accomplish in our lifetime. It's far better than taking a kid who's never been through anything that's going to fail as soon as adversity hits. We've got a lot of kids that have had life handed to them so easily um, that they can't face even a breakup of a relationship, you know, or something at a young age. And, you know. That's understandable because somebody has removed every chance they've had to get stronger, you know, and kids with disabilities, you, no matter what you do, you can't remove every chance they have to get stronger because it's handed to them every single day. So they are the strongest people. I strongly believe that. And when you look at our greatest game changers throughout all of time, they've all faced extreme adversity. Yes. Um, when we look at, like, one of my heroes, when I was uh, younger, I read about her, I heard about her, then I followed her, you know, stories, and Wilma Rudolph, because when I was young, I came from a huge family, I ended up paralyzed from the waist down as a kid, I ended up having, you know, a wheelchair for a while, then a walker, then walking with one leg, I had braces, many surgeries, orthopedic shoes that everyone made fun of. I, I lived in pain all my life, still. <laughs> um, and this woman was born into a huge family, had polio as a young person, had leg braces. Everyone made fun of her. She wanted to be an athlete. She wanted to be a runner. Everyone made fun of her because she was the slowest runner. Well, she ended up being the first woman to win three Olympic gold medals for running. Uh -huh. Yeah, powerful, powerful. That was Wilma Rudolph, an African-American also. So a black woman. And in and this was, I believe, in the 60s. Sorry, I have my memory. But um, this woman, I, I used to sit there and think, well, you know, if she can be a runner and run until her braces come off and she can keep going, then certainly I can, I can keep going. I always wanted to be a cheerleader when I was in a wheelchair and I fought and fought and fought until I got out of that chair and, and tried out for the cheerleading teams. And I, I didn't, I didn't really care at that time if people didn't think it was okay or they, sure. you know, I had a lot of humiliation throughout all my life. I got so used to it that now I'm just like, you know, whatever, make fun of me. I don't care. Just just hire me and put me on a TV show and pay my SAG health insurance, and you can make fun of me all you want to. <laughs> but if you're not hiring me and using it for the greater good, uh, I'm not going to exactly let you get away with it anymore. I've oh, learned too much. You are a gutsy lady. I love it. Now, we have um, a, a segment on You Talk that we call Are You Mad? Are You Making a Difference? Talk to us, Eileen, about, you're talking about plowing the way, clearing the way for the the, path. That, that path who have conquered uh, disability. They're still dealing with, how do we do that? How do we practically do that? Those of us in our audience, how, what would you say? How we conquer discrimination? How do we? Then you're asking me? How do we clear that path for them? Okay, I got a really simple solution. I had a wonderful conversation with my friend James Ian. He's a musician. Look him up. He's fantastic. He's one of my dearest, uh, most loved friends on the planet. Huh. Amazing human being. James Ian, musician. And we were talking about how complicated all of these issues are. He's also black and a musician and disabled. Okay. Uh -huh. So we had a really good conversation about all the current issues. And, you know, he's wonderful because he's um, 
so easy to communicate with and he he lets me run anything by him and we talk about everything so uh as we were talking about it i was like you know the solution is so simple i mean for the whole world the solution is so simple okay everyone's saying this is so difficult and how's our country going to heal and blah, blah 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 here it is simple simple solution treat every human being you encounter as a human being who is equal to you Mm. Treat them the way you want to be treated. Of course. The yeah. yep. Understand that they're a human being. They have broken parts. They have broken spirits. They've come from hell or not. And they've been through whatever they've been through to get them where they are today. So treat every human being like a human being who has a right to be where they are today because of whatever their path was to get them there. So the very simple solution is, if we could encourage every kid today, every adult today, to from this day forward treat every human being like an equal, we're done. Problem solved. So simple. The way you hope to be treated if the situation were reversed. And at any point that we encounter someone being unfair or being a bully, what I noticed throughout all my life is that no one wants to speak up in those moments. Uh -huh. I have so many times been in rooms full of people where I was made fun of in front of everyone and no one said a word. People laughed because they were uncomfortable uh -huh. or they, they thought it was funny. I've been made fun of as an adult in front of everyone in this industry in a room in front of everyone and watch everyone laugh and no one say a word. Now, when I'm in a room and someone makes fun of someone, guess who's speaking up? Guess who's jumping up and saying, hey, unacceptable. That's not happening. It's not right. Good for you. And so that's what we need to do. We need to have the courage to speak up for ourselves in the moment, speak up for others in the moment, but absolutely insist that ourselves, our friends, our parents, our grandparents, anyone we encounter, treats everyone like an equal. And should they forget, remind them. Oh. Remind them. We are all equal human beings. We, we are all here on this earth for a reason. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We really are. And it's, I, I love what you have said. Yeah. I am so pragmatic. Katie and Larissa, our other hosts, know that. I think I drive them nuts sometimes because like, let's get down to the bottom. Let's get down to the basics. It isn't that complicated. It's not rocket science. Very it, simple. It's so simple. You know, it, it, that whole, the golden rule concept, treat somebody else the way you want to be treated. To be I was treated. talking to my, my exactly. mentor earlier today about the solution for all this stuff. We're talking about it starts with respect. Respect, respect. the person. Absolutely. Who they are. Whatever yeah. they are, respect them as a person as a human who is equal, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. I'm no better, they're no better, we're equals. Yeah. And as soon as we do that, the path is clear, we are different, the culture begins to change. It's, I, I, I think it's being way overcomplicated. I think it's being politicized. Um, and it's a whole other discussion, which we won't mm -hmm. get into, but it, yeah. you, I, I, and you're one who can speak from authority, a position of authority. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe somebody as successful as you are and as, as much as you've been through, you deserve, well, you deserve as much respect as anybody else, but frankly, a bit more because you're taking that stand. You've been through so much. Um, mm -hmm. You're such a great example. Mm -hmm. Katie, I hope you're picking up some stuff from, because I know you get discouraged sometimes, and, and I hope that, that you're picking up some things from Eileen because I, I know it's hard for you. It's very discouraging, and I understand your position, Katie. I've had, I've had so many people, well-intentioned people, saying to me, well, you know, I'm sorry that people are doing that, but maybe you should just find another career. No. You know, or go go do something else. Why don't you just, you know, go get a job at Starbucks or something. Then you'll have health insurance. And I'm like, you know what? You're crushing my soul by saying I should give up my dreams because people have this preconceived notion that women especially are supposed to be physically perfect. I resent that notion. Sure. I think it's an insult to all women. I think that we are further oppressing the female population by continually perpetuating this notion that women of all people have to be perfect. I've literally had people say to me, well, if you had that limp and rebuilt leg and you're a guy, it wouldn't matter. 
Oh, I can't believe that. And I'm like, you know what? I, I take offense to that, yeah, and I don't good. accept that, and I will never accept it. I no. Never. And one of the ways that um, I deal with all of this, because it does make you mad. It makes you mad. It oh, makes yeah. you fight. It makes you angry that everyone thinks you don't have a right to be whatever you want to be, or you're not allowed to... Um, you know, follow your dreams because you, you yeah. were brought into a, or called into a profession where people are expected to be perfect. And I'm like, you know what? No one's perfect. Nope. No, one. I don't care who you are. You're not perfect. Nobody. So it's an illusion and we need to break that illusion so that we can also stop oppressing women and making all women feel like they're not good enough. We can't do that. We need women to rise up to an equal place in we society. Yeah. We need that because strong women, they bring strength everywhere they go. So we need women to feel that they are perfect exactly as they are. And it doesn't matter what the difference is. No, no. It just doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter to anyone if I walk in a room with a limp. It does not matter. No. no. It has and to me, no. that's my battle, battle scars. You know, those are my my uh warrior <laughs> medals and trophies on my shelf like you know my battle wounds and i'm proud of them because guess what i'm still here yep and i'm still standing and i'm still moving and i'm still going after my dreams and i honestly don't really care what anybody thinks about it anymore so now when someone gives me grief or you know there are a lot of passive aggressive bullies a lot of passive aggressive bullies. Yes. Uh -huh. mean things at the right time that make you, uh, that undermine you, make you believe you're not good enough. I I've got people who called themselves friends for many years who always find that moment to undermine. A moment to tell you you're not good enough or you're not pretty enough or how could you expect that when you're this or that, uh -huh. you know. So those little moments, those little microaggressions when you come in a room, I used to get hurt by them when I was younger. And now when I see them, I smile. <laughs> because now I see them as rocket fuel. Well, Keep on sending me all that energy because I'm going to send it out there. I'm going to put it in my writing. I'm going to put it in my characters like my Sons of Anarchy character who punches someone in the face. And I am going to use it in my character work. Thank God for the Actors Studio and Alan Miller and Barbara Bain and Martin Landau and Carmen Argenziano and all the people who taught me how to put it in my work. And put it on the stage and put it on the screen so that I can move people, so that I can affect people. So all the bullies out there, rocket fuel, rocket fuel. Oh, I love you it. Wanna, I love it. You wanna see me sore? You know, if you if a bully really wants to hurt somebody, all they gotta do is shut up and get out of the way. But if you're gonna keep pushing them, they're gonna keep getting stronger yeah. and stronger and stronger oh. until they fire you one day. Because that's what's gonna happen. The people that you feel that you're going to keep down in life, that you're going to crush, those are the people who rise the highest. And they never forget how hard you made their life. Yep. They don't forget that. No. So why don't we start thinking about making it a little easier? Getting out of the way. Stop making it harder. Believe me, as Katie can tell you, and I'm sure most of the people listening know, if you've been through hell, you've had enough. You've had enough. Yes. The, yep. communities, the people with disabilities, we've been through enough. You don't have to make it any harder. Nope. We are strong enough. But if you're going to send it my way, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use that energy and I'm going to spin it into something great. It's going to end up in a story. It's going to end up in a screenplay. It's going to end up going out into the world. So you don't really get to win by crushing people. There is a no win in that. No win at all. So your best... Uh, plan of action for anyone's life is to align yourself with the game changers make friends with the people who are going to shoot out into the atmosphere and change our world and help them no I yeah. that, that's yeah, brilliant that's right. and, and it begs a question i know we've been chatting for a while and i appreciate your time and your energy and and the message you're mm -hmm. bringing to our audience is killer it's a killer message yes. i'm sitting here thinking about that person that's listening to us that high school student who it just feels like they can't go on how does that person how do they pull things together in their life to be able to say rocket fuel and i love that i'm going to borrow it from you but how do you pull that when you've been beaten up and, and trampled on I'll tell you how I got there. 
and it, it would take a lifetime to tell you all the many sure. times that sure. the story that this story solution was added to but i'll tell you the first time and then i'll tell you some of the more recent ones okay but the first time that i was this is a hard story for me to retell even at this age it's hard for me to retell i'm seven years old i'm out of my wheelchair but walking very challenged and i'm the kid everyone picks on in school every single day mm. so it's hard to be that kid yeah and then when you stand up for yourself you get in trouble by the teachers because you got mad or you screamed at somebody <laughs> or you fought back right and then you get in trouble so it was one of those days where the kids were having fun knocking me over at pe nobody wants you on their team they love throwing the balls at your feet because you're going to fall over because you can't really walk that well and then i finally fought back one day and uh got in trouble I got in the car, I'm seven years old. I got in the car with tears in my eyes, slammed the door and said to my mother, I wish you would have just let me die. Oh, Eileen. Now, yeah. Eileen. Now, I've never been a kid who wanted to like end my own, never. Sure. But in that moment, I was like, it would have been easier than to go through this. I watched my beautiful mother, who had the most amazing, all-encompassing, loving heart, the most unconditionally loving woman I've ever known. Um, I watched tears go down her face, and she took a deep breath. And she looked at me, and she said, young lady, you need to count your blessings. Wow. And I was like, what blessings? What blessings? What blessings? Sure. Yeah. And she went on to, to, to point out all the blessings. She told me all the things she wanted to tell me. She's like, you should be grateful. It's just your legs. You have a beautiful face. You have a beautiful mind. You're smart. You're this. You're... She named all the things. Oh. Yay, Mom. And, yeah. and, and later, she said, uh, anytime you're tempted to feel sorry for yourself, find someone who's doing worse and help them. Find someone who's doing worse and help them. Cut to many years later when my mother died, very young, I was feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> and I was like, who's doing worse? Who's doing worse? Find someone who's doing worse and help them. So I went, literally went to Scottish Rite Children's Hospital in Atlanta and I volunteered in the terminal children's cancer ward. Oh. Because I was feeling bad that my mother died and I felt angry and didn't understand. I couldn't wrap my head around how someone dies that young. And then I thought, who's doing worse? Who's doing worse? Much younger children with cancer it did she was right get my perspective back in order mm -hmm. it truly got my perspective back and i am constantly reminded by my mother's wisdom count your blessings go help someone who's doing worse even if it's someone younger who's newly dealing with it go help that person mm -hmm. if you're at a breaking point here's a breaking point moment sometimes you're just up against it in life and one particular year, I was going through surgeries, lost my health insurance, trying to figure out how I'm going to pay for everything sure. and go through my surgeries and deal with my own cancer situation separate from the leg surgeries. And uh, somebody caused me a bunch of grief on getting on a project. Okay. So I was so angry and I was so fed up and I was so frustrated and I called up one of my favorite people who died last year, Carmen Argentiano, huh? and I called him up and I, in tears, ex told him all the things I'm dealing with right now. And I was just like, aha, you know, in one of those moments and calling the one person who knows how to just calm me down and remind me of what's important. And uh, you know what he said? He said, he listened, he listened to the whole thing. And then he's like, Eileen, you know that screenplay? That you're working on where that woman has lost everything and she's she's going out into that battle and she's got nothing left in life to live for she's got nothing to lose yeah. i was like yes he's like okay hang up the phone right now open your computer and write for her oh go write for her oh i did i was like brilliant hung up the phone picked up my computer opened it and started writing for that character who was at a breaking point who had nothing left to lose and li was literally going to go out and risk her life to to do something important in the world and 
I still can't read that scene without my own tears. Huh. So often people will ask me throughout my career, how is it that I can make so many people cry with my work? I'm using my work. Mm -hmm. So what I would say to answer your question is, when you're in a position where you're up against it, think about what your greatest dream is, figure out what that is, keep a book, sit down and write. Every time you're in your worst place, sit down and write. If you're in a situation where someone is hurting you, stand up to them. Mm. If it's an unsafe situation to do that in, calmly walk away, but don't give up the fight. Find the people over their heads. My mother said, if someone's being grossly unfair to you, go over their heads. Because the people in charge are the people more fair-minded. It's how they got where they are in the first place. They are far bigger risk takers, they are far more fair, and they will correct a problem when they know it exists. Often they don't know it exists. So in the workplace, if you have to take a deep breath and walk away, go over their heads. Good. Do it. Yeah. One minute. Pretty soon you're going to get into a position where those very people who are trying to keep you down are going to be afraid of you and what you're going to do next. Great advice. Yeah. There's also a song that my little brother Joe sent me one time, and the lyrics say, Take that rage, put it on the page, take the page to the stage and blow the roof off the place. Ah, thank you, That's Joe. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So we have to find all of these things, all of these ways to remind ourselves of our courage. Yes. And often as I've faced the challenges in the entertainment industry, which have not been few and have not been small, I would often think of the fact that I've been through so much worse. Honestly, as a person with a challenge who's faced cancer, who's had my leg rebuilt countless times, the things I've faced have been far worse than facing the entertainment industry. And you know what the truth is? I have said this since the beginning of writing blogs, and I learned it when I was young. The courageous people, the, I like to call them the cool kids. Yeah. The really cool kids, not the fake cool kids, but the really the real, cool kids. The real deal. The real deal kids, they'll never be cruel to you. Mm -hmm. They won't be. They will be your allies. Yes. Yeah. And I know that for a fact because when I look all the way back on high school days, here I was, the girl with the limp, who actually ended up being captain's cheerleading team. Oh, but always needed the captain of the football team and the cool guy because the cool guys are confident and they're not worried about there's something wrong with you. They don't care. They see your personality. They see their spirit, your spirit, and they're not afraid of what other people think because they've fought their own battles to get where they are. So my mom used to tell me, well, don't, you know, don't worry about the kids that don't like your walk. Um, you know, hang around the kids who are cool enough to accept it. And uh, just don't worry about them. And, and throughout life, I have to keep reminding myself that we navigate around the people that aren't evolved enough mm -hmm. to accept yeah. us. Yeah. Um, the kids that have, uh, you know, the strong kids, the stronger kids and adults are the ones who will accept you regardless of your differences, as long as you're a good human being. You know, if you're a, a, a bad person and you're hurting people, then game off. We're talking about character and integrity yeah. now. Uh -huh. If you're a person of good character and you're a good person with good intentions, um, strong people are going to love you. Uh, so what I've learned in life is that, you know what, this is a good thing. My, my mom told me when I was young, and I didn't get it then, but I really get it now. She said, what you have there is a great judge of character. Ah. Other people's character, yep. they're not showing you what's wrong oh. with you. They're showing you what's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. So thank them for showing you who they are. Oh, I and your mom. I agree. No, your mom. I wish I could have. My mom was brilliant. What? She was brilliant wisdom, and you know that for you to continue to carry that. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. and um, we're we're out of time, unfortunately. I can't thank you enough. I, I wish you the best in what you're doing. You are a super you. huge example oh, to yeah. our mm -hmm. audience. You've challenged me to 
you know, it, it's that old thing, get your eyes off yourself and on somebody else uh -huh. and think about what you've got and how you've been blessed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. I look forward to seeing you on the screen. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll be an extra or Katie can be an extra, whatever, in a project you're doing. Uh, just, you know, I mean, love I, I love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, this is powerful. So this is such powerful truth. It really and is. it's what our world needs today, mm -hmm. right now. And if we just did it, we'd see the world change. And that's not being overly simplistic. It's being wise. Yes. And it's it's a simple fix. Treat everyone like an equal human being. Everyone. It, it mm -hmm. is. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on your show. And thanks for putting this out there in the world. Oh, by the way, how do people stay in touch with you? So they find so, out what you're doing or... You can follow me on Instagram at Eileen Gruba, E-I-L-E-E-N-G-R-U-B-B-A. I have a Facebook page under that name, a public page, a public Twitter page, and an Instagram page. Awesome. We have a page on Facebook called Everyday Warriors. Yes. And it's all positive, encouraging. It's We try to keep politics out of it. We try to keep negatives out of it. But it's supposed to be all warrior encouragement on how to face things challenges all that stuff so everybody that posts is a is a fighter and a warrior and a thriver and an overcomer and a cancer survivor and a you know great great strong people on there so you can join us there too awesome page and to all those kids i just want to say take every bit of it and let it be your rocket fuel because you're here for a reason you're different for a reason. You're special for a reason. You're unique for a reason. And you belong here. And don't let anybody, anybody try to tell you differently. This is You Talk Radio.